In the decades to come, the African continent will be a major driver of global progress to end poverty, improve health outcomes, and reduce inequality. To accelerate progress towards these goals, regional and national leaders in sub-Saharan Africa are joining hands to address the shared challenge of teenage pregnancy. In many countries in our region, at least one in five women aged 20 to 24 gives birth by the age of 18. High rates of teenage pregnancy have harmful effects on the health and well-being of our young people and can hold back our region's growth and prosperity. National population councils from Gambia, Ghana, Kenya, Nigeria, South Africa, Uganda and Zambia are working together to share expertise, experience, best practices and resources to confront teenage pregnancy and other issues. The share of young people aged 15 to 19 who have already begun childbearing is high in all seven of these countries, according to the Demographic and Health Survey or DHS. The DHS is a globally recognized source for high quality, nationally representative data. Many factors contribute to these high teenage pregnancy rates. Parents may not communicate well with their adolescent children about sexual and reproductive health, which can leave young people with no reliable guidance on safe sexual behaviors. Adolescents often do not use contraceptives, yet around 30 to 50 percent or more of young people first have sex before age 18. Some adolescent girls would like to delay or space their pregnancies, but their use of modern contraception varies greatly. In the Gambia, less than one in four girls uses modern contraception, while more than three in four girls in South Africa use it. I never wanted to be pregnant. It just came, it just happened. So I used I used to know about contraceptives, but I was afraid of the myths that I was being told about that I'll be if I if I use them and I I did not give birth to first, it will be a problem. Uh, like I'll be infertile or it will cause some problem to my womb and or sometimes it will cause the problem to maybe the baby when I, I am pregnant. So I was afraid of those things and I, I didn't want to use them. Education levels and household wealth may also affect teenage pregnancy rates. Teenage girls who have lower levels of education have higher rates of pregnancy than girls who receive secondary education. Gender norms that prioritize girls' household care responsibilities over completion of their education contribute to both early marriage and childbearing. They also have higher pregnancy rates if they come from poorer households. Girls' lives are affected by teenage pregnancy in many ways. When a girl becomes pregnant, her life can change radically. Education can end, and then her economic prospects diminish. She becomes more vulnerable to poverty, and her health suffers. The effects of teenage pregnancy extend across multiple generations, with the children of teenage parents experiencing poorer health, educational, and economic outcomes. In every country in sub-Saharan Africa, except Mauritius, complications related to pregnancy and childbirth were among the top 10 causes of death for girls ages 15 to 19 in 2019. Pregnancy and early marriage can increase girls' likelihood to drop out of school and reduce their economic power. High teenage pregnancy rates also significantly impact the social and economic growth of individual nations and the region. UNFPA, the United Nations Sexual and Reproductive Health Agency, therefore champions rights, the right to bodily autonomy and the right to sexual and reproductive health and timely information that can be life-saving. Working with our partners, we uphold sexual and reproductive health and rights for young people. And the adolescent girl is the center of our world. 
My only disappointment is that everything I hear about adolescent pregnancy and adolescent sexual and reproductive health is not new. It's exactly what I was dealing with 30 years ago when we held the first Inter-African Conference on Adolescent Health here in Nairobi. We must take action to ensure the health and the prosperity of our people and nations. Recently, I spoke to the leaders of population councils in Africa. And one of the things that I stressed to them was the high cost of inaction. And I said clearly and without any hesitation that inaction kills. Inaction kills in every field of human endeavor, but it kills even more and more immediately in reproductive health. To maximize Africa's human capital, we all have to work hand in hand to ensure that women and girls have the tools, that they have the information, the understanding, and the power to make fundamental choices about their own bodies and their own lives. Individual nations have made promising policy and programmatic efforts to address a teenage pregnancy. The leadership of our national population councils can ensure that these nations' commitments are advanced with deliberate and consistent multisectoral action. Population and human development are the same side, the side of the same coin. We do know that when you manage the growth of your population, you can manage the benefits of economic growth to your people. We also know that the dividends that one gets when the population is appropriately managed are also much more immediate and much more impactful if adolescents are taken care of. National health and finance officials and regional actors like the UNFPA and the African Union should invest in developing and implementing multi-sectoral programs and policies that, one, provide timely, accurate, appropriate, and high-quality sexual and reproductive health, SRH, information to young people, including contraceptive counseling and services. Two, strengthen parents' ability to provide appropriate information on SRH to their children, and three, guarantee pregnant girls have the right to access education and not expelled from school because of their pregnancy. As we invest in our futures, it is critical that we meaningfully engage young people in all stages of policy and program decision-making. This engagement ensures young people have a say on issues that impact their lives and is central to achieving our shared vision of eliminating poverty and promoting health, rights, and well-being in Sub-Saharan Africa. We are the strongest when we work as one. Let's come together now with young people to advance our region's well-being for generations to come. We must support adolescents who do not want to become pregnant. Indeed, when the girl of Africa is able to safeguard her health and control her own destiny and fulfill her full true potential, they will transform the world.